Hey Cats, it's Ed, 3D Bud here. Today, an initial review of a shoe that I feel to be one of the greatest that I've ever worn. Probably the most enjoyable too. The Adidas Adizero Primex Strung. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell below for notifications when I launch the new videos for you. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. If you've got a particular question that you want to get straight to the mind of Ed Bud, hit me up with a super thanks down below, it really does help the channel out. A special version of the Adidas Adizero Primex here. This has a new upper, which is made using the Futurecraft Strung process. Now, I gave the original version of the Primex a 95% score. I think it was 11.5 out of 12. That was one of the greatest shoes that I've ever worn. It was just fantastic. It made running extremely enjoyable, exhilarating. And let's face it, running isn't just always about running at your top speed. It's about enjoying the whole process. And it helped me to do that. In my UK size 11, this shoe comes in at 306 grams. That's about 10.8 ounces. So that's 11 grams or 0.4 of an ounce lighter than the original version of the Prime X. Adidas suggests on their website that this version of the shoe is slightly heavier in the sample size. I think they need to recalibrate their scales. I've still got approximately 56 millimeters of heel stack here measured from inside the shoe. So it's exactly the same as per the original version of the Prime X. I don't think there's anything different here in the midsole. There's some other information suggested that there was a three piece midsole setup. I think the midsole and outsole of this shoe are exactly as per the original Prime X. Sadly though, we do have a small increase in the Prime X this year. They've put it up by about 10 pounds here in the UK. So we're up to 230 earth credits, which is it's a heavy price to pay for such a great shoe. I managed to pick this one up at a discount at 195, so it was a little bit easier to swallow. We'll start the review off with the upper first. Straight off the bat, I've got to say the upper is a big improvement over the Prime X. It is quite incredible in hand. The texture is different to what you probably think it was going to be. The strong upper is really quite something. It uses a more densely packed load of material here in the heel to provide a bit more structure. And it's very, very flexible up here in the toe box. It really is the real deal. I think they're onto something here. I would imagine we'll see this sort of process used in more and more Adidas shoes over the next few years. The upper does a brilliant job of locking your foot on top of that mountainous midsole. There's a look almost like a load of fiberglass, I suppose, or like a spider's web across the toe box and the medial and lateral sidewalls of the shoe. It really does vary quite a lot throughout the whole of the upper. It's a little bit more supple here and flexible with the toe box and it helps to keep it away from your toes. Just a bit stiffer and firmer around the heel area. No conventional heel counter here, as you can see. It's a bit like a cocoon, I suppose, but it is very, very comfortable on foot. Lacing uses these rows of loops and there's something to note here that the initial lacing starts a lot further away from the toe box. Just feels like it's a bit more flexible around that area. I have to say it's an incredibly containing and consistent lacing solution and a big upgrade over the original. I love this shoe and found the lacing to be absolutely fine, but to get a lighter and better, more consistent lockdown over the top of the foot, that's a big upgrade. Now they have weight relieved the tongue. It's kind of chopped up into pieces here though where they've added padding to the tongue it's in exactly the right place to relieve any pressure you might get from the laces on top of the foot it's got like the minimum surface area for the tongue that you possibly need the tongue is stitched into the lateral side of the upper and i haven't experienced any tongue sliding issues on my initial runs the tongue sits nice and flush on top of the foot without too much fooling around with it Laces of appropriate width and length, and I found no issues tying the shoe up with a runner's knot. It's kind of like my preferred option, really. You don't want loads of surplus laces banging around on top of your foot anyway. It can get very irritating. It is cool to see the original proof of concept strung upper now on a retail shoe, and it really is fantastic. It does exactly what it intends and offers a fantastic heel grip and lockdown. Flexible toe box and a lighter weight. Zero issues for me here in terms of upper. It's pretty much perfection. They've just improved the Primex even more here. A three out of three for upper after my initial runs. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. 
the foam mass and the rod configuration. I can confirm that the plate is still here underneath the insole as per the original. A few people have mentioned they've removed that, that is not the case. The lovely cushion here brings back sweet memories of when I first got the Primax and it helped me to get back to running after injuring my shoulder last year. All those memories come flooding back, the pure bliss of enjoying running once again. I think it's hard to match this shoe at any pace really. I've tested it out at the majority of paces I run at and it's just exhilarating and enjoyable. Wildly addictive and engaging at half marathon speed, I have to say. Would I race in it? Would I want to deny myself such enjoyment? It's kind of like owning a really expensive guitar and then never taking it out of the house. I've tried this out at pretty much every pace really, some really easy recovery type speeds, some steady pace running, almost tempo effort. On another run, I went up through the gears at different speeds. I did some mile repeats at seven minutes, 15 seconds per mile or 4 minutes 30 per kilometre, then moving up to 7 minutes per mile, or 4 minutes 21 per kilometre, then a final one at 6.44 per mile, or 4 minutes 10 seconds per kilometre. I have to say it felt stable and assured at those higher speeds, but I haven't really found issue with it either at recovery pace. It wouldn't perhaps be my first choice for cornering or bends, but then there's other great shoes that are really good at that, like the Adios Pro 3, or the Puma Fast R Nitro Elite. They got those bases covered and this isn't really intended at being a race shoe. I mean, it's pretty bulky. It's still over 300 grams. Would people want to wear that for a race? I don't know, it's up to you. I haven't really felt that the midsole's unstable at all over my initial runs. It's about 14 miles total, 22 kilometers. That said, I find the shoe does really want a neutral foot strike. If you pronate, it's probably going to cause you some issues. It wants a midfoot landing, and if you're deliberately hitting into the heel here, you'll probably find some instability. But what do you expect with 56 millimeters of stack height here? The plate under the heel goes some way to stabilizing the ride, but I certainly think it's a shoe that wants to get you up on the mid to forefoot. I think the new strung upper here is amplifying the midsole because it's giving you a better connection on top of it, thus improving the perceived stability of the midsole and also boosting cornering and curves. I'm finding the blade and rod sandwich in the mid to forefoot to be dynamic. It's far less aggressive tech than what we find in the Alpha Fly from Nike. Though you do have quite a considerable rocker here in the mid to forefoot. You can feel it, it's a very propulsive shoe. For me, it's probably not a shoe that I wanna run sub four minute kilometers in. Can't really see anyone wanting to use it for a 5K race or something. It's just not that type of shoe. But for effortless, easy pace running and half marathon target speed and above, I think it's tremendously good. Actually, the best midsole really that I've ever worn for running. There, I said it. And it's keeping my legs as fresh as a daisy. In fact, I might just pop out for another quick three miles in it now. A three out of three for the midsole, same as I gave the original Primax. Outsole now, and it's just as good. That ridged continental rubber outsole is just as good here in the Primax Strung. There's no differences here, they've kept it exactly the same. And um, why would you make changes to something that is absolutely perfect? This one's equipped for road, pavements, or concrete. I mean, you could use it on some light trails. I don't see why not. Maybe a bit of light gravel. I mean light gravel here, not stones or anything that resembles a mountain. That just isn't the shoe that you're looking for. Here's the original Primax. After 100 miles, basically no wear whatsoever. And that's fully what I expect from the Primax Strung. Literally looks brand new. The ridges here provide excellent traction across multiple different surfaces and I hope that they implement this in a few more Adi Zero shoes over the coming years. Yes, we've seen a similar thing here in the Adios 7. What's the bets that they don't switch up the Adios Pro number 4 next year with the same ridges? Just seems to amplify the durability and longevity of the shoe. Clearly Adidas categorised this one as a trainer rather than a racer due to those ridges here. As I say, the V1 was almost untouched after 100 miles. I don't see there being any differences here. In wet or dry conditions, it really does do the trick. I'll give it a three out of three for the outsole after my initial runs.
value now. So the only fly in the ointment here really is that price hike. It's now £230 at retail, which is eye-watering stuff. Is the new strung upper worth the extra cash? Well, is it worth any of the cash? And I have to say, yes, if you want a neutral running shoe and you've got a reasonably assured foot strike, I don't think you can get much more fun than this shoe. It just makes the whole activity of running extremely enjoyable and that's what life should be, surely. It's a little cheeky from the three strike brand to increase the price a little bit, but other manufacturers are doing that for some of their shoes too. I think a lot of people are quite intrigued by the Primax when it first came out. It just seemed absolutely ridiculous. But when you think about it, it's like 10 millimeters. Does it make all that much difference? It may be expensive for a shoe, but I find this one so incredibly versatile across the paces that it means you could use it on a daily basis. And if there's a shoe here with foam and tech that leaves the legs feeling so fresh and limits fatigue, Surely that's gotta be worth it. Propulsive and exhilarating on nice smooth roads, but make sure you stick to even camber. There's nothing quite like this shoe on the market right now. The Invincible runs close, or at least the version that I crafted myself with the saw. It certainly is an expensive shoe. One viewer did mention that it's kind of the Las Vegas of running shoes right now. The price is the only area where I can lower the value score. I'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for value after my initial runs. Totaling the scores up, that gives us 11.7 out of 12 after my initial runs for the Adidas Adizero Primax Strum. Think as running shoes go as well this is one of the most incredible looking ones i've ever tried out comfort wise unmatched and it just feels wonderful to run it surely nike and the rest of the gang are going to follow suit with a shoe that has over 40 millimeters of heel stack whether they'll be able to match this adidas monster i do not know i believe that is the highest score i've ever given to a running shoe and that's probably right because it is one of the best running shoes i've ever run in it's the best running shoe i've ever run in there we go what do you make of the Primax Strung? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. A running shoe of this quality calls for an equally good musical interlude. Today it's from Richard Hawley and his fantastic album Cole's Corner. I can't believe this was released back in 2005. It seems only yesterday that I was traveling along on my bike listening to one of the tracks on my MP3 player. I think I first heard the track The Ocean from this album and I was amazed at the almost Rat Pack style vibes. It felt like a song that could have been released in the 1960s. Born Under a Bad Sign as well has this subtlety that is missing from music these days. The sentiment and the way that the song's delivered just makes you really believe the singer. There's emotion there that hasn't been sucked out by the use of some computer technology. If anybody's ever suffered from like sleeping problems, the song Tonight will help you go to sleep but in a good way, I don't mean it's boring by any stretch. It has this weird twilight quality about it to the guitars and the tones of Richard Hawley's voice are so warm and inviting. It's kind of like an inviting fire in a warm inn when the rain is hammering down outside. The opening track, Cole's Corner as well, features some beautiful string arrangements. It really is a fantastic album. Go and check this one out, guys. Richard Hawley's Cole's Corner. He cuts a pretty sort of lonely looking figure on the front cover as well with his bunch of flowers waiting for his sweetheart to appear. Thanks for tuning in, people. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.